So good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Tokio Sasaki, a PhD student, uh, sorry, <laughs> postdoc in the University of Miami. And today uh, I would like to introduce um, it, uh, the speaker of the each talk. And welcome back to the workshop, uh, Hodge Theory and Rationality. And uh, today the first speaker is Professor Alexander Knetsov from Stiku Mathematical Institute of Western Academy of Sciences. And the title of the talk is the Intermediate Jacobians of Gushel Mukai Varieties. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, I will speak uh, about intermediate Jacobians of Gushel Mukai varieties. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, work is uh, joined, I mean, uh, some parts of uh, what I will be talking about is joined with Ali Gidiba, and some parts are joined with Alex Perry. And also, uh, much of the theory was developed uh, in the works of Atanas Eli, Laurent Manivel, and Kirill Agrippi. So I think I should mention their names. But uh, the main uh, subject of the talk, uh, the intermediate Jacobins, are joined with uh, Ali Gedeba. So um, uh, I think I should start with uh, reminding uh, what is a Bush and Mukai variety and why uh, it is interesting uh, uh, for this conference. So let me remind the definition. Uh, it is the following. So a Bushi Mukai variety, and I will usually abbreviate it to GM. Uh, a GM variety uh, is just, um, as, I mean, for the, for purposes of this talk, uh, will be a smooth, uh, a smooth variety. So it, it is defined as a smooth, uh, dimensionally transverse intersection uh, of the following varieties. So first of all, we take the Grassmannian compact. Grassmannian of two dimensions of spaces in a vector space of dimension five. So it sits in P9 uh, by uh, the Blucher embedding. Then we take the cone over this variety uh, inside uh, uh, inside a 10 dimensional projective space. Then we intersect it uh, in the projective subspace of dimension N plus four. And then additionally we intersect it with a quadric hypersurface in this projective space. So uh, X is, uh, is an intersection like this. Uh, so that's uh, the definition. It is uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, it's a good question uh, what is interesting about these varieties. And uh, I hope to uh, show during my talk, uh, that uh, these varieties are quite interesting. Uh, and and uh, there are many things that can be uh, described uh, about the derived categories. Uh, there are some conjectures and some results about the birational properties. And uh, all this uh, is tightly related with uh, the period map, so with uh, Hodge uh, theoretic properties. So uh, this is a nice uh, combination of subjects uh, of this uh, workshop. So I think uh, it's a good topic for, uh, to, to talk about. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, let, let me explain some uh, more details about these variables. So uh, first of all, um, so as I explained this, Intersection takes place, uh, takes place in M, in the Indian projective space for the colon of the Grassmannian. And so, if, if we expect to have a linear subspace of dimension M plus 4, uh, this implies that M uh, is at most 6. So, the dimension of a Gushin Mukai variety is bounded from above by 6. Uh, also, uh, it uh, does not follow from the definition. Uh, but uh, it makes sense to consider only uh, varieties of dimension uh, three or higher. Uh, so, uh, and this will be uh, the restriction 
uh, for my talk today. So uh, I will restrict to this uh, values of n only. And when n uh, takes uh, these values, then uh, one can check that x is a final variety. Uh, so uh, of dimension n, so n is always the dimension of x. Uh, this is a final variety. Uh, its index is equal to uh, n minus two. So that means that the canonical, the anti-canonical class is n minus two times uh, the class of a hyperplane section, and uh, the Picard number. Uh, of x is one. So the Picard group is generated by the class of hyperplane section. Uh, actually, one could also consider the case n equals two. In this case, these varieties are, uh, are K3 surfaces. Uh, the Picard number may be bigger than one, but uh, they have uh, the nice property uh, of being uh, pre-neutrogen. So one can include really not our general K3 surfaces into consideration. Okay, but uh, for me, uh, the interesting case is the case of one varieties, which is just the case when the dimension is between three and six. So uh, the first thing that uh, one can tell about uh, the derived category of such a gem variety uh, is that uh, is the form. In fact, uh, using this, Representation one can construct uh, a nice semi orthogonal decomposition, uh, which will consist uh, of uh, a certain exceptional collection and uh, an additional category. So the exceptional collection uh, is uh, obtained, uh, can be obtained by restriction uh, from the cone over this gross mean. Uh, by the way, uh, the, the smoothness uh, assumption in this definition implies that the vertex of this cone does not belong to x, because if it would belong to x, then x would be singular at, at this point. And because of that, uh, x comes with a regular morphism to Grassmannian to um, And so we can pull back uh, vector bundles or coherent shapes from the Grassmannian. And in fact, by considering these pullbacks, you can construct an exception collection. So uh, it looks as follows. You take the structure sheet and you take uh, the tautological bundle on the gas medium. So I will denote by ux the pullback of the and to the tautological bundle from the gas medium. So it's a bit more convenient to take the dual bundle. So we take this, this uh, exceptional pair and then we consider its twists. Um, and so on up to n minus two. So, uh, if the dimension is three, we, we just have a pair of vector bundles. If the dimension is four, we have four vector bundles, and so on. And uh, uh, this is an exceptional collection. This is quite easy to check, and uh, the but uh, it does not uh, generate uh, the entire derived category. So there is a complementary category, which I will denote by AX, and uh, which we call uh, GM category. And uh, this category is, is the analog of, uh, of the K3 category of a cubic format that was uh, mentioned several times uh, during the conference. So uh, what one can prove about this category? Uh, there are several things that we mentioned here. Um, yeah, so uh, first, uh, 
uh, it, turned, I mean, uh, it turns out that uh, the properties of this category depend very much on the parity of the dimension of X. So let me remind you again the dimension of X. And so if, if the dimension is even, which means that it is four or six, because N is between three and six, then a X is a A equal to one. Uh, this means that uh, its circumfer of the X is isomorphic to the sheet by the, the same property that the K3 category of, of a cubic forefoot enjoys. So uh, this is the first thing that you can check. And the second thing is that the quotient homology of the X also look like uh, those of a K3 surface. So you have one dimensional space in degree four and minus two, and then two dimensional space in degree three. So it looks exactly like the quotient homology of a K3 surface. And uh, if the dimension is odd, uh, then the properties are different. Uh, then X is what we call an enriched category. Uh, that it's a uh, self -hunter. Like the surface of the derived category of an enriched surface, so its composition of the shape by two uh, with an uh, involutive auto equivalence. So uh, tau squared is uh, the identity. So it's a, uh, an involution composed with the shape by two, exactly like uh, it, it it holds for. A, for an enriched surface. And also, and also one can compute the quotient homology of this case in this case, but uh, in this case, uh, it doesn't look like uh, quotient homology of an enriched surface. Uh, the behavior is somewhat different. So there is a 10 dimensional space in degree minus one and one, and two dimensional space in degree zero. So from the point of view of quotient homology, it looks more like uh, the derived category of a curve, of a genus, of a curve of genus T. So uh, the category is a kind of mixture uh, of these two things. So uh, these are the properties of these categories. And also um, one can uh, uh, ask uh, whether these categories are geometric or not. Uh, meaning, uh, are they equivalent uh, to derived categories of some varieties? And uh, here the results are the following. So, if n is odd, then this category is more than. Uh, what happened? Uh, I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, Антон, а можешь сходить, сказать, что зарядка нужна для ноутбука? Uh, там вот такой Даниил какой-то там. Uh, uh, спасибо. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you. We can. Uh -huh. Good. I can. Uh -huh. Good. Uh, so, uh, if n is odd, then ax is never equivalent to d of y for some algebraic variety y. And the reason for this is very simple. Uh, for instance, you can uh, see from, uh, you, you can easily deduce it uh, from the uh, theorem just because of this property of the set functor. If uh, there, there would be an equivalence with d of y, then y should be a surface. But uh, uh, a surface, uh, it's a zero quotient homology is at least three dimensional. So you 
it can be like this. So uh, this never happens. And uh, if n is four or six, then uh, what one can check is that a x uh, is not equivalent to p of y for a very general. Okay, uh, and uh, this uh, can be also deduced uh, uh, from uh, theorem one with uh, one uh, additional um, point. Uh, namely, uh, here one can also check that uh, if you look at k0 of kx uh, at, at the growth integral of this category, and for simplicity, let us say that modular uh, numerical equivalence, then uh, it has. And two for x very general. And again, uh, if, if this category would be equivalent to d of y, uh, then and this would contradict to this uh, isomorphism. Okay, uh, these are uh, the general properties of these categories. And uh, and you see, uh, for instance, uh, from the, uh, if you look at these properties, then you can observe that uh, when the dimension is even, uh, these categories uh, are very similar to the uh, K3 category of a cubic purple, as I already mentioned. And when N is odd, they are somewhat similar to the uh, non-trivial component of the Dirac category of a cubic uh, three. And so one can guess that um, these varieties have uh, very similar rationality properties. And this is the conjecture that we got. So this is uh, Alex Perry. Uh, the conjecture says that uh, if M is three, then X is never rational. And if M equals four, then X is rational and only if uh, the category x is equivalent to the field of y. Well, it's easy to see that y should be a three surface. Uh, so uh, I think uh, I need to comment uh, about this conjecture. So uh, first of all, uh, the second part is uh, completely analogous to the uh, conjecture that was mentioned by Brenton and by some other people during this conference uh, for cubic fourfolds. This is just a uh, complete analogy uh, here. Uh, and for n equals three, uh, uh, I should mention that it is known that the general x is not rational. Actually, uh, one can use intermediate Jacobians to show uh, that. Uh, X uh, has a singular uh, degeneration uh, such that its intermediate Jacobian uh, is not uh, isomorphic to the Jacobian of a curve. And so uh, it follows that uh, uh, for a general X, the same property for the intermediate Jacobian points. And therefore, X, a general X is not rational. But uh, what we expect uh, by looking at the properties of these Gaussian uh, Mukai categories is that uh, it is never rational. A, a Gaussian Mukai threefold, a smooth Gaussian Mukai threefold is never rational. That's our conjecture. And also uh, one can ask what about higher dimensions, dimensions and, and uh, four and five. And here uh, actually uh, we checked with uh, Tibar that any GM 
5.5 and 6 will is rational. So uh, in these high dimensional cases, there are no questions about rationality. Uh, in fact, maybe it is interesting uh, to consider uh, to discuss rationality of these varieties over a non algebraically closed field, but uh, I have uh, no idea about what happens in this case. It, it, it might be an interesting story, but um, since the dimension is quite high, it may be not so easy to prove anything about this. Okay. Uh, okay. Now uh, to uh, uh, discuss. Uh, some uh, deeper properties of these uh, varieties and the derived categories, I need to say a couple of words about the moduli spaces and uh, the figure maps. So uh, let me remind that X is the cone over the plus minimum. Uh, so I will use V5 for the five dimensional vector space that sits here, and then I'm intersecting the projective space of dimension n plus four and the five vector surface. Okay. Uh, then, uh, I mean, to, to describe the modular space of these varieties, one can associate with such a variety the following data. So, first of all, uh, uh, let us consider the space V6, which is just the cohomology on this projective space of the ideal of X. So, in other words, this is just the space of quadrics passing through X in the ambient projective space. Uh, it is a simple computation to check that this is a six dimensional vector space. And also, uh, it's easy to see that. It contains a natural hyperplane, which is identified with this vector space V5, which is just um, say um, it then, uh, the ideal of the power of the grass right. So uh, recall that uh, the grass minion 2 5 uh, is, a, is an intersection of five. Clicker quadrics, and uh, the same holds true for the core of this cross medium. So, uh, this space we find is just uh, the space uh, of, of, of Clicker quadrics. In, the, in this uh, way, it is canonically identified with this way for space we find. And since uh, any quadric that contains uh, the cone of uh, the cross medium also contains X, uh, this is naturally a subspace in this system. And this is a hyperplane in this six dimensional space V6. And uh, the uh, third part of the data that one can consider is a bit more uh, hard to explain. Uh, this is actually a certain 10 dimensional Lagrangian subspace in the uh, lambda in, in the exterior cube of V6, uh, uh, which is endowed with a symplectic form given by edge product. So A is a Lagrangian subspace with respect to edge product. Uh, so uh, Maybe uh, let me not uh, to explain how this subspace is constructed. Uh, it's, it, it's not very hard, but uh, it will take us uh, a bit uh, away from the main story. Uh, just believe me that uh, it can be constructed. And uh, the main result uh, about this data is that uh, X can be uniquely reconstructed. Uh, from uh, 
this data. So we need to specify V6, a hyperplane V5 in V6, and the Lagrange in such case like this. And uh, one also needs to specify uh, the parity of, of that dimension. And all this is up to the nature of action of PG of V6. So, uh, namely, if you just consider this triple V6, V5, and A, then you can always reconstruct X from this data uh, in two ways. Uh, you can construct one even dimensional variety and one odd dimensional variety. And so, if you also specify the parity of, of the dimension uh, of, of a variety that you want to reconstruct, then it becomes new. Okay. And, uh, in fact, um, one can use this result to, uh, to give a description of the core small space for motion multi varieties. Ah, uh, I forgot to say that, uh, in fact, uh, there are two things. Uh, so, first of all, I mean, this, this data should enjoy couple of properties. So first of all, uh, uh, this subspace A uh, should not contain any decomposable vector, which means that if we take E of A, so it's a subspace in, uh, in the projectivization of lambda 3 V6, we can also consider Grassmannian 3 V6 that sits here. And we can consider the intersection in this ambient project space. And uh, one can check that uh, to ensure that the corresponding variety is smooth, uh, this intersection should be empty. And so we call this property uh, by saying that A contains no decomposable vectors at all because decomposable three vectors in, in lambda 3v6 are parameterized by the gross medium. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is that uh, uh, the dimension of, of, of X that corresponds to this data can be read from, from the data uh, uh, by the following formula. So as I said, you can, uh, if you just consider this triple, then there are two varieties uh, associated to, to, to it. And the dimension is, Either five minus the dimension of A intersected with lambda three B five or six minus this dimension. So you see that uh, these two integers differ by one. So as soon as you uh, specified the parity of the dimension. There is a unique choice. So uh, these are two things that you can check. And then uh, uh, you can prove that uh, the core small space uh, has the following description. So I will note this core small space by M, G, M, M. Uh, so this is the core small space for N dimensional. Uh, GM varieties. Uh, so we can get it right from here. Uh, and these are just pairs in uh, triples. Uh, maybe uh, when we talk about pairs, uh, I, I will consider this six as a fixed vector space. And then uh, I will only need to specify V5 and A. So we consider the space of pairs, uh, which are points of the was meaning times this projective space that parameterizes hyperplanes in V6, uh, such that these two properties hold. So A does not contain decomposable vectors, and uh, the dimension of intersection with lambda 3v5 is uh, constrained by uh, this second property. And then uh, I take the quotient of this by the action of J V6 
uh, which is uh, linearized uh, in the line one of all to m six, uh, where m is sufficiently large. So uh, that means that I pull back all to m from this Lagrangian plus medium, and then uh, m that it would be all six pulled back from this projected space. So that's uh, the description. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the theorem here is that uh, this is the coarse modular space. Or uh, GM varieties of dimension M. And uh, from this description, uh, it is easy to see that uh, this variety comes with a natural morphism. Uh, to uh, the GIT motion of the cross -linear. So we can uh, forget about the second factor here. So there is a natural projection to this JIT portion space. And uh, as I will explain a bit later, this is uh, more or less uh, the period map for this variety. And uh, uh, we have the following definition, uh, which says that uh, Assume that we are given two Bushel Mukai varieties, X1 and X2. So I will say that they are period partners. If, uh, if their dimension is equal, if their dimensions are equal to each other, and uh, the images of, of the corresponding points uh, in, in this period space are the same. Essentially, this means that uh, if you construct A and B5 for one variety and then B5 for the other variety, then there is an element in EJLV6 such that uh, it takes one to the other. One data to the data. So uh, that's the first thing. And the second uh, thing, it's uh, useful to consider the following uh, extension of this definition by asking that, uh, so uh, I would say that X1 and X2 are generalized period partners. If uh, I, I'm going to replace the first condition, the condition of the equality of the dimensions by confluence on the map. If they have the same parity of dimension. And the same condition for the period points. So uh, in this uh, sense, uh, GM3 fold can be a generalized partner of a GM5 and a GM4 can be a, a partner of, of a 6 one in this sense. And uh, one more uh, uh, observation is the form. So uh, this variety, this quotient variety, in fact, comes with a natural evolution that I will denote by R uh, that takes uh, A a Lagrangian subspace A in lambda 3 v 6 to the subspace A pair in lambda 3 v 6 2. So note that these two vector spaces come with a uh, natural pairing, just uh, in, in, induced by the duality. And so uh, whenever we have a 10 dimension subspace here, uh, we can consider all elements of this vector space that vanish on A, I denote it by A curve. 
And it's easy to see that uh, this subspace will be then Lagrangian for the uh, synthetic form here given by H group. And uh, it's easy to see that this is an evolution. And maybe somewhat surprisingly, this evolution is not trivial. Uh, this is a result by Kieran O'Grady, uh, who extensively studied this uh, JT quotient of the Lagrangian transmedium by PJ. And um, using this involution, one can also reproduce the following functions. I would say that x1 and x2 are period dual to each other. Again, dimensions coincide and um, the period point of one of these varieties is obtained from the period point of the other by this evolution. And uh, in the same way, I can say that they are uh, generalized. Period goes if again here we have a congruence modular form and the same equality here. So uh, we have this bunch of notions, and uh, maybe uh, uh, the main results about uh, rationality and uh, the right categories of this uh, varieties are the following two theorems. So the first is uh, joint with uh, Debar, uh, and uh, it, it tells you that uh, if x1 and x2 are period partners or period dual of each other, then the varieties are by rational. And the second theorem, which is joined with Alex Perry, tells you that if x1 and x2 are generalized period partners or generalized period rules, then they are motion capturing. So you see that uh, the birational properties and uh, the categories of uh, and, and the properties of this uh, interesting part of derived categories of these varieties are controlled by this period now. Okay. Uh, Uh, I, I think uh, I need to uh, pass to uh, the, the main part of this talk, uh, to the intermediate Jacobian story. Uh, but uh, to do this, uh, I need to uh, introduce a couple of uh, more notions. So uh, let us look at this. Uh, JT quotient variety, and we just consider uh, this quotient of the Lagrangian Gasminian by PJ6 actually. So uh, it parameterizes uh, just Lagrangian subspaces uh, in number three or six up to uh, the action of PJ. So, uh, in fact, uh, with, uh, with, with the point of this uh, JT quotient or in other words, with the Lagrangian subspace like this, one can associate a bunch of interesting algebraic varieties that were considered in detail by Kiron O'Grady. So um, actually, um, uh, let me denote by y a greater or equal than k, uh, the, the following, uh, this will be a sub, sub variety in P of P6, uh, this will be the set of all points in P of P6, such that uh, the dimension of intersection of A 
is the uh, V branch number will be six uh, in the space of all uh, three vectors, uh, uh, which can be written as V uh, as a as a wedge product of V with the two vector is at most uh, is at least two. So this is a sub variety of this. And uh, these are called uh, EPW varieties for Eisenbach based on water who started them, uh, who, who started, started the study and uh, Kieran made uh, the biggest progress. So uh, I will also abbreviate why Prato equals them one to just why. Uh, and uh, the properties of these varieties are important. So first of all, if you take, if you consider uh, the first of these varieties, uh, this is a sextic hypersurface. In P5, uh, second, its singular locus is equal to the next variety. Y A greater equal than two, which is uh, a, a normal uh, surface of degree forty. And uh, if you take the singular locus of this surface. This is the next stratum, uh, which is a finite set. And uh, for general A, it is empty. So typically you have a sixty fiber surface, which is singular uh, along the surface and along the open smooth surface. And um, already uh, proved that uh, the, this sixty fiber uh, surface has a uh, kind of unexpected property. Uh, it comes with a natural summary from double covering. Uh, Canonical uh, double covering, I mean, we know it by y a tilde this double covering, uh, such that this y tilde a is, uh, is a hyperpeller variety, is a hyperpeller core. And this covering is a uh, range uh, only. At singular points of, of this hypersurface. Uh, in particular, it is a uh, metal uh, in co dimension one. So, uh, this is a very nice uh, story. So, you have this uh, interesting hyperpeller variety associated with this data. And uh, there is also a similar uh, result that we to uh, debug that uh, one can also construct a canonical double covering of the surface. Uh, which is a uh, range uh, along the next structure. So in particular, if A is general and this next stratum is empty, then this is just an entire double curve. So uh, in fact, uh, it, it is uh, important to consider these two varieties as uh, we will see uh, from the uh, following results. In fact, uh, these varieties encode uh, uh, the whole structure of Gushin-Mokai variety. 
So, uh, first uh, part of the theorem is the following. So, if uh, uh, maybe let me state it as a separate theorem. So, I uh, assume that uh, this is empty. Uh, then uh, the middle of the homology of the pushing the prior variety uh, with the Z conditions, and uh, one should take what is called uh, the vanishing homology. Uh, it's just the orthogonal to the pullback of the corresponding homology of the gross meaning. So uh, I'm sorry, here I will restrict to the case of even M. So I assume that M is four or six. Then if this if this finite set is empty, then uh, the integral, the middle integral homology of X, this is the only interesting uh, coach structure that one has inside the homology of X. It is isomorphic to the second homology of y and zeta of this hyper teller protocol. Again, with integral conditions, and uh, you need to take the primitive cohomology. Uh, uh, here, primitive means uh, that uh, it is taken with respect to the polarization given by this double covering from the embedding of, of this hyper surface in group P5. Uh, up to a date, so this is. Uh, should be uh, n over two minus one. So um, there is a scientist, and uh, this is an isomorphism of polarized integral coach structures. Uh, so uh, here the polarization is given by, by the intersection product in the middle homology, and here the polarization is given by the uh, by the Bogomol of GT uh, form. On the second homology of this hyper variety. So, uh, in particular, if you combine this uh, with the uh, Torelli theorem for hyper -Keller varieties that uh, uh, have been proved by Bravitsky, then it follows that uh, the period map. Uh, for GM varieties of even dimension can be written as the composition of the uh, projection to the function of the Lagrangian plus mini by G and C. Uh, which uh, was shown by operating to be the modular space for this double EPWU sextics uh, for these hyperpolar varieties. And then uh, to take this period map uh, for EPWU sextics. So if we compose this projection of JAT quotients with this isomorphism and with the period map for EPW sextics, then the composition is the period map for gem varieties. In particular, if you combine this uh, with uh, the theorem, with the theorems about uh, variationalities and uh, equivalences of Mukai categories that I mentioned before. It follows that the fibers of this period map are precisely uh, the birational classes. Um, I mean, they, they, they sit inside uh, the birational equivalence classes of Angus and Mukai varieties, and also in the uh, equivalence classes for Gush and Mukai categories. So that's an interesting feature. So uh, one can say, in other words, that. Torelli theorem fails for Bush and Mukai varieties just because this first map has non trivial fibers. Uh, and uh, 
but but if you replace it uh, by uh, by rational uh, Torelli theorem or by uh, in, in some sense categorical Torelli theorem yeah, or Bushnell-Mukha categories for GN categories, this Torelli theorem holds uh, in even dimension. Okay, uh, so that's the first thing. And now, uh, what about what dimensional varieties? So that's um, the main theorem for today. And I hope I have some time to explain. Uh, so uh, consider M to be 3 or 5. Uh, then uh, there are uh, the following. Uh, then one can call the following results. So uh, first, one can consider the Albanese surface, uh, the Albanese variety for this total uh, double covering uh, of, of the EPW uh, surface. Uh, I mean, uh, it is uh, at all uh, when uh, the next stratum is empty, otherwise it is uh, branched along uh, this finite set of points. So, uh, Usually this is a smooth surface, so it's clear what, what is uh, its albanism. Uh, when the surface is uh, singular, uh, its uh, singularities are just uh, ordinary double points. So you can consider arbitrary resolution of its uh, singularities and then consider its albanism variety. So uh, clearly this does not depend on the choice of this resolution. So the first statement is that this albanism variety has a nature of uh, maybe a canonical uh, principle of realization. So it's a uh, uh, principle of a right, a billion variety. And uh, moreover, uh, if you consider this organism. For this, for this. And you can also consider the advantage for the surface uh, that is associated with the A pair. And then there, as a market, as principally for where are extended varieties. That's the first result. The second result is that uh, this. Um, uh, this uh, principally polarized abelian variety of the point of pushing the reason as a motion of the intermediate Jacoba with this advantage of variety. It doesn't matter. Again, it's principally polarized abelian varieties. And uh, the third statement, which is, uh, of course, uh, the corollary of the previous uh, statements, is that if x1 and x2 are uh, generalized uh, period partners or uh, generalized. Do uh, varieties, then the intermediate Jacobians are examined. Again, as principle to erase the medium varieties. So, part three is a consequence of part one and two, just because uh, in this. Yeah, I mean, uh, for uh, generalized period partners, this is just by definition because uh, the Lagrangian subspaces uh, corresponding to these varieties are equal. And since the intermediate Jacobian uh, is amorphic to the Albanese uh, varieties of these varieties, so we obtain the required isomorphism. And for generalized period uh, tools, you need to uh, use uh, the first uh, part of the theory. 
And so uh, one can also um, uh, deduce that uh, the, the, the period map for Bushel Mukai uh, varieties of odd dimension uh, can be uh, realized with the following composition. So uh, the, the first parts uh, are the same. So we still can consider the projection for this JT quotient. Uh, and then here we can take the quotient of this one space by the evolution R that interchanges A and A curve. And uh, the first part of the theorem tells you that there is an initial uh, morphism to the uh, moduli space A10 of principally polarized abelian varieties of dimension 10, uh, just because. Uh, um, this albanese varieties are principal uh, 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 ten dimensional and uh, they are, uh, uh, and they come with principal polarization and so the period map uh, varieties of dimension uh, of what dimension can be factored as this composition so this is one corresponding to this evaluation so we have this description Okay, uh, I had a plan to explain how this theorem is proved, but I guess I don't have time for this. Uh, yeah, uh, let me just uh, say a couple of uh, remarks about this theorem. So the first remark is that uh, this, uh, the first part uh, is a bit uh, mysterious. What I mean is that uh, we had to prove it, we had the first proof uh, partially part two, uh, the first thing to prove is, is this identification. And uh, first we prove that uh, these abelian varieties are isomorphic, and this allows to, uh, to uh, transport the principal polarization from the intermediate Jacobian of X to this Albanese variety. And this is how we endow it uh, with the principal polarization. Of course, uh, we also need to check that the principal polarization you obtain in this way does not depend on the choice of X, but this is a more or less clear because X varies continuously. Uh, I mean, uh, all X corresponding to, to the given A vary continuously, so the principal poli polarization cannot vary. And uh, then um, to prove uh, this uh, isomorphism, uh, we observe that uh, a Gushin Mukai vehicle. And it's a uh, uh, dual Bushin Mukai threefold can be related by a certain birational map. And uh, we, we can use the properties of this map to check that the intermediate Jacobians are isomorphic as principal polarized abelian varieties. And this implies that the corresponding Albanese varieties are also isomorphic. So, in a sense, uh, the proof of this result uh, uses heavily uh, Bushin Mukai varieties as intermediate step. And it would be uh, and, and we have no idea how this isomorphism could be proved directly without using Bushin Mukai varieties, which is kind of strange. Uh, it, it would be very interesting to, to try to prove this directly. And another thing is that uh, this uh, isomorphism, uh, uh, I mean, uh, to prove uh, this isomorphism, we also uh, use. Uh, uh, the second part of the theory. And uh, it would be uh, nice uh, to find uh, uh, a proof of this isomorphism just from the equality of the corresponding Bush Mukai equations. So I expect that this is possible, but uh, I don't know right now how to do this. So I, I would guess that uh, the, the equivalence of this categories that we prove with our experience should uh, formally imply the isomorphism of the corresponding uh, intermediate Jacobians. And I think it would be nice to find the direct proof of this fact also. And I mean, now I, it uses uh, the second part of the theorem as, as a crucial intermediate step. Okay, uh, I guess my time is over, so let me stop here. And I will be happy to answer questions. If if anyone has questions. Thank you, Sasha.
Thank you. Any questions? And just a quick technical point that I missed. Hi. Um, what is A perp? I thought A was Lagrangian. Yeah, uh, A was a Lagrangian subspace in lambda 26. And we can also consider lambda 3 the sixth form. We can consider the, the dual six dimensional space, it's with H cube. There is a canonical pairing between these two spaces, uh -huh. and you can consider the, the orthogonal complement of this subspace here. And this is what I denote by P. I thought the fact that A was Lagrangian means that A and A perp are identified, that A perp is basically, A perp is A. No, no, no. Uh, uh, you're confusing uh, taking the orthogonal co complement in the same space with respect to the symplectic form, which is indeed the same. Uh -huh. And here we take the orthogonal complement in a different space with respect to a different uh, so that really gives you an non-trivial involution. Okay, uh, thank you. This is, a, uh, of course, this is, I mean, the as association that takes A to A perp is, of course, an involution on the JIT quotient of the Lagrangian Grassmannian right. uh, by PJL. But uh, this is a non-trivial involution. Th this was proved by uh, Kieran O'Grady. Okay, thanks. So I missed that. What was this conjecture by you and uh, Perry that you have uh, stated at the beginning of the talk? Uh, so there were two conjectures, one about threefolds and one about fourfolds. So uh -huh. the one about threefolds uh, is saying that uh, they are never rational. No, this is Gushel. For, for Gushel, for Gushel. Yeah, yeah, for any Gushel Mukai threefold is non rational. Uh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the first part. And the second part is, is uh, for fourfolds, it, it is saying that it is rational if and only if the uh, okay, corresponding. Under, okay, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the same as uh, for cubic fourfolds. Other questions? Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, using uh, this theorem, uh, can you uh, prove uh, it's known that uh, for very uh, the general, Jibushin uh, Mukai is non, non, not rational? Uh, Threefold, uh, you mean? Threefold, yes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, using uh, your result, can you uh, reprove this for general one? Ah, yeah, uh, that's a great question. So, uh, in some sense, you can see from this theorem that we can somehow control the intermediate Jacobians of Kushin Mukai, right? The support dimension. But if we want to prove something about the uh, non rationality, then we also need to control. Uh, the theta divisors. Yes, yes. And, uh, for, for this, we have no clue so far. Uh, this would be a very natural next step, but uh, we don't have any result in this direction. Uh, there is a certain conjecture by Atanas Ili about uh, the singular locus of the theta divisor, but uh, so far it's, uh, we don't know how to prove it. Even for general one. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, it was stated uh, in maybe not very precise way. You can interpret it as a conjecture for a general variety, but you can also hold that it holds true for any smooth uh, gem variety. Who knows? I mean, anyway, it's uh, it's very, I mean, it's, it's completely unclear for now. I see. And uh, another question. Can you characterize uh, a special uh, Gushel tab? Type varieties. Uh, uh, there, there are Jacobians uh, using uh, this method. Uh, no, I mean, uh, for any, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I mentioned that the theorem that the uh, birational class of a GM variety only depends on A. But the same A corresponds uh, to some ordinary Gushel Mukai varieties and to some special Gushel Mukai varieties at the same time. Uh -huh. So uh, for any special Gushel Mukai variety, there is an ordinary which is birational to it and vice versa, and the intermediate Jacobians are just the same. 
So in some sense, there is nothing special about the intermediate Jacobians. Oh, I see. Okay. And it's not possible. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Other questions? If not, let's thank Sasha again. And okay. we'll proceed uh, in 10 minutes. Thank you, Sasha. Thanks.